Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm sorry it's been so long, but I'm back now. Happy New Year, seems a bit weird to be saying that. So as you've seen from the thumbnail for this, um, I am going to be making a needle case today. I wanted to make something that was kind of like slow so I think sewing style, you know, rather than having a, an instant thing made. And I've decided that I really want to have um, a needle case. You know, I used to make these and sell them quite a lot and they're great fun to make and I really like choosing the design for each one and the different fabrics and everything. I thought I really want one that inspires me. So I've got this. This is a vintage um, needle case, which is actually John James needles, I'm pretty sure. These needles are beautiful. They are vintage, probably 1950s or 1960s in a little leatherette case. But there are days when I can't thread these, so I have to use modern needles. And I've had some inquiries recently on Instagram and various messages and stuff about what sort of needles I use. Generally speaking, for anything except cross stitch, I use milliner's needles or applique needles. So that'll be for hand stitching, for hand quilting, all of that. First thing we're going to do is do some cross stitch. And I've got some different slogans and things written here. So I've got may your bobbin always be full, needles and pins, a stitch in time and lots of evidence of how dyslexic I am because I can't spell stitch. And I'm hoping at some point to um, put these up on a, a PDF on my website when I get that up and running, which hopefully won't be, probably be a couple of months from now. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll pin a comment under this video and then you can download a PDF and it will be a proper chart with these slogans on. This is one of those projects that's absolutely perfect for using up any beautiful saved pieces. I've got things like that, beautiful lace. There's some more under here somewhere, here we go. I think this was a tray cloth that I've obviously used for other things. This has already got some stitching on. And then this bit, which is some beautiful, don't know if it's cut work or insert work, but anyway, it's absolutely stunning Edwardian piece there. And so you'll need some bits and pieces like that if you like that kind of thing. If you don't, that's fine. Don't worry about it. And then have a look through fabric scraps. See if there's anything that you really like. So you might have music fabric from a project a long time ago. Or you can get um, these lovely vintage inspired quilting cottons, which have got some lovely French bits and pieces on. You know, there's thimbles and scissors. And so if you don't want to, to piece your own bit, you could literally just use something like this. And with some careful cutting, you could actually get something that looks really cute. If you'd rather use something more brightly coloured, uh, this is a beautiful um, K Facet Collective. I think it's a Philip Jacobs design. But I was rummaging and I found this. Now, to you, it probably just looks like paisley. To me, this is the most perfect fabric ever. I found this in a, like a flea marketplace, you know, like an antique centre, and there was five yards of it. It's from the 19, I think the 1930s or the 1920s, and it's been, it was never used by anybody. Um, it smells lovely. It's obviously just been tucked in a drawer somewhere, and I've used it for different projects and things, um, and then sold them, And but I made myself save some for me, and I thought, you know what? perfect that's what my needle case is going to be made out of you need to choose what fabric you're going to use for the entire case first so that we can choose the right color thread so let's get the thread box out and we'll choose some thread okay so i've chosen some embroidery thread and i've chosen this green color which is very similar it's not identical very similar to the green in the main fabric that I want to use and I would just say you can get away with a couple of sort of shades a little bit warmer or cooler but it's going to look quite different when it's on your background fabric and on the chart each square represents one stitch length so this is um, Aida fabric so you could just about see all the little holes here so each one of those is like where the lines of the squares intersect and that's where you put your needle in. 
And I know lots of you will have done loads of sewing before and you know that, but if you don't know, <laughs> that's, that's what you need to do. So I'm working on the L. So I've put in the first stitch, which makes the pretty part of the L. And I'm just going to stitch down all the way. And these stitches all go diagonally across each of those sort of squares. And I'm just doing a back stitch. And I've knotted this because it doesn't really matter. It's not like a fancy bit of cross stitch that needs to be completely flat. So a back stitch is literally you go down your first hole and then you come up one hole away. There's my needle. So I'm going to bring that up and then go down into the previous hole and then make your stitch. And it's just the neatest way of doing um, lettering in either cross stitch or embroidery or whatever. And I'm using three strands of um, embroidery thread. So again, if you've not done anything with embroidery thread or um, embroidery silk or embroidery floss, whatever you want to call it, the thread itself is twisted and there's six individual strands in there so what I've done is I've uncoiled them untwisted them I'm using half of so here, this is the other piece so there's three in this it's a little bit thick than what I would normally do but I want to be able to read it I want it to show up and two isn't quite right so there we go so that says needles so I'm gonna turn that over and just finish it off so all we need to do is just thread back through some of the stitching on the back we need to cut around this so that we can use it. And I suggest if your eyesight is not quite as good as you'd like it to be, that you use a magnifying glass or something for this. So what I want to do is I want to fray it and leave one square all around. And I think the best thing for me to do is to just show you. So I just need to make sure I'm going to cut it through the right hole. I'm using very, very small scissors for this. And also doing this is it's a really nice little extra embellishment for things. So you could put anything you like on. You could stitch someone's name or a word. You could have like Valentine's Day or Valentine or something like that. And you could use these for um, making cards. So now I want to fray down to the first hole. So I'm literally going to pull each of these threads out fiddly but doable okay so there's the top one you can see it's sort of a bit frayed now and then just work your way around and do the same on each side it gets easier as you go around so now we've got a little motif a little frayed edge around it put this on one side do not lose it <laughs> Because we don't need it quite yet but I just wanted to start off with a sewing -y bit now we've done the sewing -y part for the the front cover we need to look at the actual cover construction so I've got some bits and pieces here of what you need to cut the first one is the needle case cover and this is going to be cut out of interfacing if you have it so in inches it measures 10 and 1 8 by 5 and a half or in centimetres 21 by 14. The other thing that you will need is a tiny little snippet of wadding. This is the padding. You can see on here this is like my little pattern piece and the wadding actually fits into that bit there. And that measures 6 and 5 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths or 17 centimetres by 10 centimetres. And then you need to make some cardboard inserts they measure three and seven eighths by three and one eighth or 10 centimetres by eight centimetres. So the only thing we've got left to cut is actually the interfacing. So I'm just going to literally put this on here, stick some pins in it and cut it out. And put that on one side for now. And then really, really the last thing to do is using the wadding size. That's also the same size as the pages that are going to go inside it. For that, you're going to need some felt. Now, you don't need a huge amount of felt. It just so happens I've got loads. But make it the best quality that you can rather than that nylon stuff. 
If you can get hold of um, wool and viscose felt, that's what I use. It feels nicer, it, it looks nicer, it's not shiny. I am tempted to use this dark red, but I don't know what it would look like if you can see that. It's that, probably, or this pink, which is the wrong pink. It's my case, so I'm going to use the stark red. If you've had your felt folded, like I have, those folds hardly ever come out. And you need to bear in mind that each page will be folded in half and stitched in along the back. There is space with all those measurements I gave you to do that, it's not a problem. And then you need to bear in mind that inside the front of the book and inside the back of the book you need to have um, a piece to finish it off. I think the easiest way of doing that is making it as an extra page so it's already in place. I'll show you what I mean later. For my purpose I think I'm going to cut three. That would give me four pages in the middle and try and make this as neat as possible. You could do it with a rotary cutter except I hate cutting felt with a rotary cutter because I don't know it seems to blunt the rotary cutter. I don't know if that's a thing but it, it's really hard to do so I'm just going to cut really carefully with my scissors and try and just keep it square. Okay there's two. Let's see how thick this is. So they will be like that inside the book and then I will stitch down across the middle to hold them in place. It would mean that that was opened and that would be stitched down on the inside of the book and so all you'd be left with is just that. And remember these aren't double sided because if you put needles and things in here you know you're putting it in like that and you can see it on both sides. I've just answered my own question really. I think we need another one. So we have got one of these bits now. So what we'll have is this with a cover on it and then there will be a piece of wadding and then there will be two pieces of card and then three pieces that will make up four pages and the front and the back inside. Now there is one more thing that I had almost forgotten which is if you want to tie your needle case shut when you've made it. We need to have chosen what is going to close it before you assemble it. There's two ways of doing it. One, you can have a piece in here like so and then that will get stitched in. Or the other thing you could do is have something that goes all the way across the outside to do it up. It's entirely up to you. This method is slightly easier to position everything. So those are all the bits that we've got so far. Next, I'm going to take this, the shiny side up. First of all, I'm going to draw a little guide thing where the edges are. So anything I put on the design, this is like the extent of the, actually what you're going to see. The rest of it is just seam allowance. My needle case is going to be covered in this pretty fabric here but I'm not going to cut it out just yet. In fact I'm going to put this over the top just to help me visualise the thing. So one of the things I wanted to do was I was thinking about cutting out one of these couples but I think they're all a bit big. And we're on to plan B now, whatever plan B was. So plan B was to use some rescued embroidery. <laughs> so there's several ways of doing this. You could mount it onto bonder web and then just cut it out and literally just have the embroidery on there or we can use it as actual part of the the case itself part of the uh, fabric so meanwhile i'm going to cut out the actually the whole of this now i probably could have placed it better but i don't i am not wasting any of this paisley at all what i could do is put some of this embroidery here I'm just going to have to cut it out so look away now if you don't like seeing things cut up. I think the piece I want to use is this bit here. Now again because this is not going to take any wear or tear I think it's going to be all right we're going to get away with it so I'm going to snip around this but you want to leave a little tiny bit of fabric around the outside. I think I'm going to attach this by using Fabri-Tac. I am going to go away off camera to do this because it's really hard to hold at the right angle anyway. Okay so I've cut it out and it actually was easier to do by separating these two so I'll 
when I put it on, I'll just make sure that they're right next to each other. But it was it was much easier to do. So even though I'm not going to put loads and loads of different layers on this, I'm still going to use the interfacing because it'll just give this a little bit of st stability. Even though it's a, a lovely weight of cotton, I will just go and iron that on in a minute. What I'm going to do, remembering my <laughs> design window, is to put these bits on like this something like that and then I'm going to use my little needles that I did earlier on and put that in maybe here maybe like that maybe change the position you know all sorts of different things can go on I might put it there but I have to check where the spine's going to be and and all that sort of thing it's just making like a little fabric collage of all lovely bits and I also need to decide if I want to tie this closed, and I think I do. So what I was thinking was having that as my tie. So what I might do is put that all the way across the middle underneath all of this, and then have it to tie around. I'll try it and see what it looks like first, because if it looks like a sort of afterthought, you know, I'll, I'll change it and actually put it inside. So I'll come back when we, we're at the uh, decision-making stage. Okay, so I've ironed this on, so it's got a little bit of stability to it and I've got one nice big paisley sort of somewhere along the back so what I worked out was that if I folded this in half and I was just using this as a guide because I've allowed a little bit for the spine as well because of all these different layers and then I had it roughly laid out like this so I sort of saw that and I really liked that obviously it'll have the paisley underneath so and I have to find out a way of being able to mark this. So I found these little um, mother of pearl uh, leaf buttons that I've got from somewhere, I can't remember where. So how am I going to be able to tell what this is going to look like without using a bit of card? I thought the best thing to do is to lay it out, get the wadding guide and place that on. You won't like we put on the marks on here, do that on here and then use a water soluble pen hopefully, I haven't tried this yet, and draw around it. Do not iron it, because you'll be stuck with this really strange shade of blue lines on things. You could possibly use a chalk marker, that should come out easy enough. I wouldn't use any of the coloured ones, the prim ones. I would just use a plain tailor's chalk or something like that. Can you, you can just see it here. So that's going all the way around, which is great. So what this means now is that I've got a little bit of a guide so I know where my design window is without using a bit of card. That looks good and then it definitely 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 needs some buttons if you haven't got anything fancy you can always use you know shirt buttons small buttons even just the plastic ones if you've cut them off of things and kept them you can make the cutest little four or five petaled flowers and things out of them so anything like that is absolutely fine you know any little bits and pieces you really like you know the color check things on the salvager fabric you can use things like that or the names of them. So that's what it's going to look like on the front. And then on the back, I might put this. It's going to be too much that way. It's going to have to go sort of square. It would be nice to have something on the back. And then I've decided that I'm going to not put the lace across the middle because I think, I think it'll look weird. So how are we going to attach all this? Well, I'm going to use a mixture of stitching and glue. This lace on here I will probably stitch on on the sewing machine if I could manage it I would prefer to do it by hand but my holding hand is really giving me problems at the moment so I'm going to do it on the sewing machine but I'll do a really really open stitch I'll probably do a straight stitch these two bits if I'd had bonder web this would have been bonder webbed on and ironed on and that would have been that problem solved however no bonder web so this is going to be glued on with fabri -Tac. not sponsored but really great stuff I absolutely love this stuff it's brilliant for fabric and it doesn't bleed through it's like very um like the moisture content is very low so you don't get that bleeding through of stuff which is great. These will be stitched on, the buttons of course, and then this usually I stitch it on through the fabric but I think I'm going for glue to go today guys, sorry about that. And then this one, I'm going to have to couch it by hand, I can't do that on the machine, it's a, a waste of a beautiful antique piece. So it's a little bit of a combination of how these bits are going to be done. So the first thing I need to do is stitch this bit on. So I've stitched on the lace and I left the pins in place to show you how I've done it. 
I pinned in the middle here and then a couple across. These started off going the other way when I stitched down one way and so it didn't walk around. I stitched down from this end to this end, flipped the pins around and then I stitched down from this end to this end again. So I just thought I'd show you the pinning pattern so it doesn't move. So I'll take those out. That's the piece of lace on there, it's in the right place. And save that snippet for something else. I have to do it in layers and you'll find the same if you've got different methods of attaching. Or even if you haven't, you still need to attach what is further back in the picture. Does that make sense? Um, so this was underneath things. This is on the back anyway. So these are the first two bits to be attached. So I mentioned I was going to couch this on and having pinned it on, I'm definitely going to couch it on because I don't think there's any way of stitching this down on the machine without it showing. Like on here, can you see my stitch line? It's because I used a really, really wide line and I used quite a dark colour thread. On something like this, when you're going onto a darker background, off-whites will read as white, you know, beige will read as cream. So go a shade darker would be my advice if you're stitching onto a back dark background. If you're stitching onto a light background, I would say try and get either as close to the background colour as possible. So couching, moving on, is a means of attaching one thing on top of another. It's usually applied to threads. So say if in embroidery you wanted to use a thick gold thread or a gold braid, obviously you can't stitch backwards and forwards through the fabric. It's just impossible and it would look horrible and messy. So what you do is you hold the thread in place. Say, um, I don't know, say it was a picture of somebody holding a lute or a guitar or something and you wanted to use gold thread for the strings. So you would lay the, the pieces down for the string, like a, a long piece, and then you'd literally stitch over like a little tiny stitch almost like a staple if you like but out of thread and then you do another one and another one and another one to hold it perfectly straight you shouldn't be able to see them and then all you'd see is this beautiful continuous thread of gold which is amazing it's also the means at which we're going to do this it's weird it's somewhere between couching and applique so I'm literally just stitching over one little bit to hold it in place. I need to do that over every single loop. So I'm choosing the furthest point of each circle and then stitching in in the direction at which this piece of lace is made and I've forgotten what it's called again. I think it's a type of Irish lace. If anybody recognises it, can you can you tell me what type of lace this is please and pop it in the comments? <laughs> That'd be really helpful. Okay. I've got to the end and back where I started so I can unpin this now. So I think probably what I'm going to do is uh, just stitch a diagonal line across here. I say a diagonal line, you won't see it, so I'll literally do a little stitch here, here, in the middle either side and then come out here and then that's probably the end of my thread. So I shall just catch that down like so. So that's it. It's You can't tell that I have stitched that on. If you wanted to be really pedantic, you could stitch across this way as well, but honestly, that's it's going nowhere. And you can see how it now looks like it's part of the thing. You know, there's no loose bits. It's, it's really sort of beautifully attached, but you can still see the pretty fabric underneath. Um, so I think that's gonna look beautiful on the back of my little needle case. So now I need to position the rest of the bits on and glue what needs gluing and stitch what needs stitching. Okay, so I want to stitch these on. So I'll just take these little bits away. Now this bit of lace is on and I know that the spine is here. As long as my buttons don't wander off over my little lines, it'll be fine. And yes, I've chosen green on purpose because I thought it'd look cute. So I'm literally just stitching a button on. But it doesn't need to have, have any give to it, like if you were using it on a cardigan or something. So I'm literally just stitching it on for decorative reasons. So that's that one. So the next one will go down here and if you wanted to be really cute about it you could stitch across here as well and make it look like you know, a little stem and then just tie off that one. And then the last one's gonna go here like so, a little dark one, little dark red one, pinky colour. So I'll just tie this one up as well. So it's really taking shape now, isn't it? So we'll just put these bits back on to remind us where they're going. So you make sure this is like the final positioning. And I think I'm going to glue the flowers down first. So for this part, you should really use um, a bit of cardboard. 
Um, so it's just really to um, so that you can get a good layer of glue over the back and if you can make yourself like a little spreader out of some cardboard what's cardboard? <laughs> cardboard <laughs> so um, and then you can like shush it round and I'm going to put some on here like sort of dot it round and I've just done it on the stitching and there's a reason for that just in case there is any bleed through at least the stitching provides a layer of extra so what I'm doing now is like spreading it out this is messy there is no way of making it not messy I think we need a little bit more because I want to glue actual edges of the fabric down as well after cutting it off the just need to stick that down so it's not going to come undone on the bits that haven't got glue on on your hands this is where you need to work your way around every single petal and glue it on then peel the glue off your fingers ready to do the next part I think you can see what I'm doing I'm just kind of dotting the glue and what I'm doing here is I'm trying to see if there's any sheen that will tell me that there's glue on a bit should be okay it's sticking to my fingers with a finger with no glue on do exactly the same again it doesn't look too bad you know it it do the job it's not not my first choice of a method of doing something but it's not going to come undone the last thing is to put our stitched bit on here, the needles part. I'm wondering if I want it a little bit lower down like that. So this one, again, lots of glue. At least it's a square and not a funny shape. And the reason why I wanted to stitch this one on originally is because I wanted to leave the fuzzy bit, the bit that we frayed earlier on. I wanted to leave that as a, you know, like a bit of texture. So I think I'm going to attempt to do that little bit of bleed through anyway that is the gluing section that's what it looks like now so while this is drying before we put it to one side and dry if you've used a thingy pen now is the time to take this line out because we really do not want that and it's easier to do it now when you're going to put it on one side because I've done gluing and stuff like that while that's drying, what we're going to do next is um, stitch the pages together. So these are the pages here. Now you will see the more pages you have, the more, um, I don't know what that's called when that happens. But that's okay. We're not worried about that. We can trim them afterwards. And in fact, that is what I would recommend. But they need stitching together. So the best thing to do is to stitch them together however you want. I wanted to do it like you would do book binding. So in big stitches I was going to have four big stitches however that requires being done by hand I can't really do much hand sewing today so I'm going to attempt to do this on a sewing machine which I have never done before the main thing is is to get these pages attached to each other that's pretty much it so I've pinned it so that from this bit to the outside each time just to stop the fabric moving around here's our page sandwich not bad not moving around too much so I just need to stitch that on the machine having realized I haven't marked the middle point so if I do a little mark here so we have a mid mark do, do that first before you pin it I'm going to use the same thread that I used for the rest of it yeah I know this is red and all the rest of it <laughs> Um, it's fine, trust me. Because we're trying to stitch um, several layers together, set your stitch a little bit bigger. And then when you get to the end, leave yourself a tail, just in case. So we can take out all these pins now. They did their job pretty well. I think that was a good pinning pattern. My thoughts on using the same coloured thread, I should probably say it seriously. So when these are folded, mostly you're not going to see where the stitching is, except in the very centre one. And I don't think that looks offensive anyway. Um, but any of these tails, if we need to stitch them in, if this is what I'm going to use, the method for actually attaching it to the, the cover. These, this is the same colour thread that I've used on the lace, that I've used to machine the lace on. So there are our pages. Don't trim them yet. Wait until the entire book is assembled and then you can cut back then. This is more what it's going to be now. Oh, I'm so glad I went for the red. Oh, it looks so cute. Time for me to go and do some glue removal and get a nice cup of tea and uh, I'll be back when this is dry. Okay, so I think we're at the assemblage part now. And I'm really glad I took a break because... <laughs> 
it made me um, have a little think about how this is all put together and why we have stitched these pages in. I'm pretty sure this is dry now. So there we are, that's the cover. We don't need to stitch the pages to the cover. That's the whole point of stitching the end, or like the end papers if you like, to the pages in the first place because these are what is going to hold the pages into the book and I'll show you what I mean. So what we're going to do in a minute is start putting the various layers together. So the first one will be putting on the wadding, then it will be putting the card in and then we'll be turning all of these edges in and then when that's tied in you know when it's all finished this part I need to remember to put my tying pieces on and then I'll just pop a little piece here and a little piece here and then at that point we get our pages and put them down on here and make sure they're sort of square on and then this one will be glued in place I think you can stitch it in place and again originally I had intended to stitch it in place so I think what I will do today I will use a Pritt stick or I use a purple glue stick to hold it in place just enough and then I won't glue this edge here or this edge but it'll be holding it in place I'll be able to show you what it looks like finished and then when I can sew I will actually sew the cover to the page all the way around because I think it looks nice. You don't need to. You could leave it at the glued stage. But if you do, don't use something a bit stronger than Pritt stick. You could use some Fabri-Tac. What we need to do, first of all, is to glue this wadding to this book cover. Now, do you remember I actually managed to mark the inside a little bit which is kind of handy my wadding has a bobbly side and a smooth side so i'm going to put the smooth side down in there you don't need a huge amount of glue you just need something to hold it in place because what's actually going to hold it all together is the pages so just literally dot along here and then before you glue it down remember we've got some tails in here just make sure they're all flat and inside the area and then stick this down. Now the annoying thing about wadding is actually it's saving grace as well in something like this is it's got a tendency to wobble around and be a little bit stretchy but that will cover up any imperfections when we're actually assembling the rest of the book. So next we need to stick the pieces of card in. You don't have to use card if you want, don't want to but I just like a little bit of stability and then before I stick this down I am just going to do a little check that it's still square to the design. You can do that by lining it up with your registration marks, if you made them, just turning it over. And then I'm pushing back the card as far as I can. And what I'm trying to do is to make sure if I glue this down where it is, if I'm going to end up with a straight bit here, which I really want, because it's going on to the wadding you can be a little bit more generous it's not going to come through on the front it tends not to anyway but it'll be the one time when you don't think it's going to that it will so and then i put that in line with the registration marks now the wadding's not in quite the right place or it's not completely square but this is so i'm going to put some glue on here and then exactly the same again line these up with the registration marks not the wadding don't worry about that it will be fine while I give that a minute to dry before I start manipulating the cover around it, I'm going to cut my ties ready. So it'll actually be glued on about there. And I want to do a nice generous thing me. There we are. So I've got my two ties ready. And then because this is um, a lace that probably will come, start to come undone, I'm going to do the same sort of thing that you would do on ribbon where you cut down into it and make like a little end like that. So they're ready to glue in. This is one of the more difficult bits to do. So there's several ways of doing a corner. Where you've got a piece of card underneath, you can pull your corners like that and then you pull this up like so. It's all got glue under it, by the way. And then you can make something that looks like a sort of... Let me hold that. Can you see that? It looks like a sort of mitered corner. That's probably the neatest and best way out of fabric on something like this. You could snip this piece off and do it, but you end up with like fraying bits and 
unless you can guarantee that your end paper is going to cover it up. It looks a bit messy. Oh, and then the last method is you can cut a square out, fold over one side and fold over another side. Same problem as the previous method. So I'm going to go for, because we've got somewhere to work to, is to pull this on here. Now you want to pull it firmly, but not tight. So I can feel the point there but I'm not blunting the point. And then that means when I come to fold the fabric over, there's a little bit of give in the fabric. If you pull it tight, you'll never get the two sides to meet up. The next thing we need to do is just put some little squares of glue. Just put that in there. Now remember what I said, you want to pull it firmly, but not tight. So I'm going to put glue along here and then pull that in. So fold it over first before you've got any glue on it and sort of finger press it in place so that when you've got the glue on it the fabric will sort of know where to go and also try not to get any glue in the middle just in case your sides don't meet because it goes shiny this one i would do one at a time because it'll take a little bit of time and then here just pull the glue away from the corner and you can spread that down Make sure you haven't got loads on your bit of card. Pull the glue away. This will also help the um, layer of fabric that you just put on there stick in place. You know, when it looks like that, sort of nice and tacky but not wet, this is when you fold this part in. And then I'll do the other end as well. And the reason why I do one end rather than working all the way around is because if I start doing this, it gets quite complicated over here. So we now have one cover. And we also need to do one more bit of gluing. And that's these ties. Holding it just, I'm trying not for it to close because it will glue closed. I need to just work out where I want them because they need to be in the same place. So if I put them on the outside for now, I wonder if I can pin it. Okay, so we just want to match these two ties up. Move it around until it's exactly where you want it. And now being careful to follow the pinning marks. Basically, you do not want one higher than the other because you won't be able to make it work and it will look really, really messy. So this is one of those instances where I'm going to actually use this pen just to mark this top edge. And I'm keeping well inside where that felt's gonna go in a minute because I'm not gonna be able to wash this off because it's on card now. Put some glue on this bit. And then I'm going to hold the end where there isn't any glue and then pull it like that so I don't have to touch it. <laughs> so we need to let this bit dry a little so that we're not pulling stuff about. So I'm going to put this on one side, let it dry for a few minutes and then we'll do the very last bit which is gluing in the pages. Okay, I think this is dry, dry enough now. So I'm using a purple glue stick and this dries clear but it means I can see where I've gone just for me to show you what it will look like glued. Obviously, if you were gonna use that as your final thing, you would glue all the way to the edge, but I want a little bit of space left to sew. So, we take our pages, we're gonna put them down. So you just put one page, the outer one, all the way over, and then you spend a little bit of time just smoothing it into the right place. So move it around. Stick it down, check that both sides are the same, that it's not wandering off. Sometimes it sort of goes down a bit like this one has. So I've got time to peel this off and then just put it back again and try again. It's looking pretty good. So that covers up all your bits and pieces, all your raw edges, the cardboard. So it's really important before the glue dries, just pull a little like so. Don't worry, we're going to trim these pages in a minute and just manipulate your corners where they're supposed to be just to get the pages can you see right down into the spine because those outer pages that's where we want them so it makes like a proper spine on your little needle case there's quite a bit of movement on pages here so we've got to trim these down the best bet is to open your book like so and start trimming so i know this isn't completely right but i've taken off the worst offenders. So we'll close the book again. And then I only need to take off about, what is that, about a quarter of an inch. So it's not quite right. I've got it right at the bottom, but it's not right at the top. So what I need to do is get those pages again. So there's the needle case. That's what it looks like. You open it up. So I've got nice, I've got four pages now to put needles in. So we could put some needles away. That would be fun. What have we got here? Look at that, it's so cute. And then, to keep it all safe, 
just need to tie this part. So that is my little needle case and that's how you make a little fabric book as well. You can see that you can take this as the jumping off point for other fabric books and doing different pages and stuff. But the, um, the, the main takeaway, which I had forgotten all the way through until right near the end, is that if you stitch all of the pages together first down the, the spine, you don't ever have to worry about stitching them in So and then ruining that part unless you were going to do your like, traditional bookbinder method. I hope you have a go. And there's the back. Let's see? Let's open it. I hope you have a go. It's, it was really fun. I really enjoyed doing something just completely frivolous and it's got a little bit of everything. There we go inside. And then the little pages. And um, I look forward to seeing you very soon. Thanks as always for joining me. I really appreciate it. And... Hi to all my new subscribers. We are so close, so close to 5,000. I cannot believe it. You know, it just, it just blows my mind. It really does. So thank you so much. I can't do this without you. Keep watching and I'll keep providing delightful videos like this one. <laughs> okay, see you soon. Bye.